The GTX 1660, one year later. Throw the intro. Welcome back to Tech215 guys, I'm your host Nick, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the GTX 1660, specifically the MSI Gaming X Twin Frozer model. So this card was released about one year ago with an MSRP of around 250 bucks. That's what I picked my model up for, but right now this very card is going for 270 bucks on Newegg and Amazon. Now that could be a result of where we are with everything going on in the world right now. Could be because of the GDR5 shortage. I don't think that's it. But should you guys spend 250, 270 dollars on a 1660 in early 2020. In this video today, guys, I'm gonna be putting this card through its paces, testing some graphically demanding AAA titles like Gears 5, The Outer Worlds, Forza 4, and of course, the game that brings all hardware to its knees, Crisis 3. But we're not only gonna be seeing how well this thing performs in games because we know this card can do just that, we're also gonna be testing to see how well this thing performs in workstation related tasks as well, and also how well this thing streams because it does come with NVIDIA's brand new H.264 NVENC encoder. But before we get started in today's video, guys, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not already and ring that bell so you get notified the second I drop a new video. I put videos out about once a week, everything pertaining to hardware and PC budget tech. And you guys can also follow me on Instagram at tech underscore 215. So remember, hit that subscribe button. Guys, with all that out of the way, let's run some benchmarks, do some real world testing, and take a closer look at the GTX 1660. Let's get into it. The GTX 1660 Gaming X Twin Frozer from MSI was released on March 14th for a suggested MSRP of $249.99. At the heart of the GPU is the 12 nanometer FF Touring TU116 die. The card comes packed with 1,408 CUDA cores, 48 ROPs, and 88 texture mapping units. It also features 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 clocked at 8 gigabytes per second on a 192-bit memory bus. The MSI 1660 Gaming X has a base clock speed of 1530 MHz with a max boost clock of 1860 MHz, putting out a total TDP of 130 watts. With an increase in cache per CUDA core and 16 dedicated floating point cores, the 1660 also sports the brand new H.264 NVENC encoder, making streaming games and rendering videos a walk in the park. The rear I.O. features three display ports and one HDMI, while the fans are MSI's proprietary Torx 3.0. On the software side of things, NVIDIA's classic GeForce experience is better than ever, featuring shadow play for gamers that don't have their own dedicated capture card, and Ansel for capturing all your favorite screenshots. The 1660 also features G-Sync, supports DX12, OpenGL, and the Vulkan API. On our test bench today, we'll be using the Ryzen 7 3800X, clocked at 3.9 GHz, 32 gigs of G-Skills Trident Z Neo 3600 MHz memory, the Corsair MP510 NVMe Express SSD, and it's all sitting on the X570M Pro 4 from ASRock. Okay guys, let's run some benchmarks and first up is Gears 5 from Microsoft Studios. High settings and the 1660 ran this thing with no issues. This game is a visual delight. We got an average FPS of 89 and a 1% low of 62. Smooth as butter. Keeping the theme with the just absolutely beautiful games today, the Outer Worlds, high settings. Similar story here as we got 90 FPS with a 1% low of 61. Guys, if that's telling you anything, it means that we are constantly over 60 FPS and this thing can get down and buggy. Next up, another Microsoft title, Forza 4. I played this game for an hour. For some reason, I couldn't get my afterburner to work, but I ran the in-game benchmark at ultra settings and got an average FPS of 101 with a minimal of 86. Another winner 
for the GTX 1660. But now let's bench a real heavy hitter in the cleanup spot tonight, Crisis 3, and at high settings and with anti-aliasing at 4x, we were just shy of 60 FPS coming in at 58 with a 1% low of 42, but still very smooth and playable for a game that brings high-end hardware to its knees. So it's clear as thing can game, but what about streaming? And we ran two different Twitch streams. We played Fortnite and Crisis 3 in OBS Studio. And at 60 FPS, over 6,000 kilobytes a second, zero dropped frames. Now we didn't have my face on stream, we weren't running any overlays, but the gameplay footage was crystal clear, nothing but smooth sailing. I'd give this thing an A in terms of streaming. And in terms of productivity work in Adobe Premiere, it was an absolute workhorse. Scrubbing through the timeline, rendering effects of 4K, and exporting was quick, especially when you pair it with something like a Ryzen 7 3800X, or even with a 6-core like the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. And in terms of GPU temps, we had 48 degrees Celsius at idle, so we ran Furmark for about half an hour, and 78 degrees Celsius was our max temp on our GPU core. So if you're buying this card, temperatures are not going to be an issue. For the money, this is a great card for gaming, streaming, and workstation related tasks in early 2020. I give it two thumbs up. All right, guys, so it's conclusion time here on the channel. Should you spend $250 to $270 on a brand new GTX 1660? Let's start with the good, and obviously this thing is a killer when it comes to playing games. Every game today was at 60 FPS besides Crisis 3, but not many cards can play that game at above 60 FPS high settings. I think for the price, you're getting an awesome card. It's well built, it runs good, you're gonna be able to stream your games, and it's fantastic for video production. If you guys want something like an RX 570 or something like a GTX 1060, three or six gigabyte model, my best advice would probably be to wait. Nvidia is coming up with three series cards real soon and I think it would be kind of a waste to buy something like this when you can just wait and probably get something better or until this card comes down a little bit in price. In terms of other options out there, if you guys wanna take a look at the RTX 2060 KO from EVGA, that card is going for $300 and just for $30 more, you'll have ray tracing cores and it actually has a better CPU die than the 1660 it has something similar to what's in the gtx 2080 so if you guys are into content creation and video production video encoding that would be the card to get for only 30 dollars more if you guys want to spend around the 200 dollars mark i would suggest looking really hard on ebay and local deals to find a gtx 1070 it has eight gigabytes of vram which is two more than the 1660 and honestly it performs pretty much on par. You will not get the touring based architecture, but the GTX 1070 is still a phenomenal card and it's $50 cheaper on the used market. I think that's another great alternative to the GTX 1660. But I really, really like this card, guys. I think it's phenomenal for eSports titles. I think it's great for AAA titles. All your AAA titles at 60 FPS on high settings. If you want 1440p, you guys are gonna have to upgrade to something a little bit better. I think the 1660 Ti and the 1660 Super are better options because they have that increased memory bandwidth. They have better memory on board like GDDR6. But that about does it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope everyone out there is safe in quarantine, getting through it the best they can. I know it's hard, but this should be over soon. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss a thing. I put videos about once a week, everything pertaining to PC hardware and PC budget tech. But that about does it for me today, guys. I should be back in about a week with more tech content. Stay safe.